Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Vivs here from Slide Nerd. In this video, I was actually thinking of talking about how we can handle the Recycler Views item click from outside the adapter, and that is with the help of the activity of the fragment, where we are going to have an on item touch listener, which is going to intercept the touch event of the Recycler View, and from there, it's going to decide which child view is the one getting the touch. And based on that, it's going to trigger the appropriate action. But as you notice, when I was trying to make this, I kind of figured out that, hey, wait a second. There is something about the touch framework, which I haven't talked about anywhere in my video series before. And even if you are an intermediate developer, I'm sure that there is a lot of things that you don't understand still at this point with respect to the touch framework. So here in this video, I'm going to take up one of the most complex topics in Android, and that is the touch framework framework with the help of three methods that is the dispatch touch event the on intercept touch event and the on touch event out there so with these methods we'll be figuring out exactly how android propagates touch events that is the motion events from the parent to the child and under what conditions the cycle repeats and under what conditions the cycle stops now if you are a beginner in android who hasn't had much experience programming i strongly suggest that you don't watch this video because you're gonna have your mind blown at the end of this video this is damn complex so let's get started so the first thing that i like to tell you is about pointers in the touch system now this is from lars Vogel's article which i was reading earlier and here when you touch the screen at a specific point with your finger what is basically generated as information is the x and the y coordinate along with the index of the pointer id that's what it is termed and the reason for this is android supports multi-touch hence android system needs a way of tracking all your fingers on the screen at the same time so i've taken this presentation from devsbuild.it that has explained fantastically how android handles touches when you put your finger on the screen, action underscore down is initially triggered. When you lift your finger, action underscore up is triggered. When you put your finger on the screen and move the finger around, then action underscore move is triggered. And there's action underscore pointer underscore down and pointer underscore up, which are triggered based on the fact about the secondary fingers and the other fingers that you put. Now remember, since the touch system is multi-touch, you can have several fingers on the screen at the same time. Except the primary one, which responds to action down and action up, all the other ones are considered to be under pointer down and pointer up. In other words, there are several pointers. Each pointer has a different ID. Each pointer has a different X and Y coordinate. And you can basically track everything about which finger is where. And as we go further in the series, I will be posting examples of how you can use a single touch and the multi-touch and you can detect them. You can do something with it. Now, each pointer that you have like i said has the touch location which is basically the x and y coordinates the number of pointers that you can have that is the fingers that you have and the even time out there now a gesture is defined as the beginning with action down and ending with action up whether you fling the screen whether you swipe the screen whether you drag the screen whatever you do you put your finger on the screen and then you lift your finger up and that is why action down to action up is considered to be a single gesture so let's try to understand the whole touch framework cycle given that we have this hierarchy there's a layout one containing a layout two which is containing some view like a button or a text view or whatever so in that case this is the first breakdown that we have on the screen now this was taken from peer chen's website which i found pretty good so here if you see this is your complete window which is basically the decor view as they call it this contains three things there's the status bar there's the navigation bar at the bottom and then there's the content view which you guys always set by using the set content view method inside your activity now the content view is basically a view group which is basically a frame layout it's going to have other layouts like your relative layout or whatever you define inside your activity underscore main.xml and if you have buttons inside that layout there's bt over here there's bt1 and 2 out there so now let's take a look at the event handling pipeline the events are processed in a nice cycle first everything is passed from your window to your activity to your decor view to your content view to your buttons now if your button indicates that it is interested in processing that event then it is consumed or it stops at the button if it says that hey 
guess what i'm not interested i don't don't bother me then it's gonna pass back that to the content view to the decor view to the activity and so on now what is exactly being passed what are the methods that are exactly being called let's take a look at them in perfect order so the whole touch framework cycle starts at the activity it also ends at the activity there are two methods there's a dispatch touch event method and the on touch event method let's take a look at them so here is the dispatch touch event method of the activity that takes a motion event argument it says call to process the touch screen events you can override this method to intercept all touch screen events before they are dispatched to the window be sure to call this implementation for touch screen events that should be handled normally so in other words this is the point where the whole process of dispatching starts in other words it simply means forward this event to the view group to the view group inside that view group and ultimately to the text view or the button which is at the root of everything out there now let's go back and take a look at what happens with this so here the first one to be called is a dispatch touch event from the activity it's going to send that event to the root view attached to your window which is your layout file the frame layout or the relative layout inside that frame layout and finally it's going to go all the way down out there and ultimately if none of them are interested in a processing this touch in other words if the text view says i don't care it returns a false the button says i don't care it returns a false then the on touch event is going to be called for your activity so it says it's called when there is no view that consumes that event it's the last method to be called so the idea you get here is the first method is a dispatch touch event that's called and the last method is the on touch event inside your activity that's called now let's take a look at this with the help of a nice diagram when you touch the screen somewhere the activities dispatch touch event is going to forward that to the window to the decor view to the view group now inside the view group you have this method called the on intercept touch event where you can indicate if you're interested in kind of snooping on that touch event and doing something with it if you're interested then things stop over here and things take a different turn if you're not interested then the view group is going to be queried in other words all the views that are contained like the buttons the text view the other items out there they are going to be found within this view group and for each of them in the reverse order the dispatch touch event for that child is going to be triggered in other words that is going to go here to the view that is the text view or the button and here there are going to be two things that are going to be considered first did you set an on touch listener on this view if yes then the on touch method of that listener will be called first followed by the on touch event method for that view if there is no listener then the on touch event will be directly called over here now inside the on touch event it's a boolean method basically you have two things that you can return you can either return a true or you can return a false now when you return a true it means that you have processed it this touch event inside your view that is your text view or your button or whatever but if you return false from the on touch event it means that you're not interested and things take a different turn so what turn do they actually take let's find out so let's try and understand this cycle in a better manner there is a view group a let's say it's your frame layout there's a view group b inside your view group a let's say a relative layout is inside your frame layout and then there's a text view which is inside your relative layout that is what you see inside view group b so in this case the activity is first going to dispatch the touch event to the person who is at the outermost level which is view group a inside this the first method that will be called is the on intercept touch event now this method simply is a way of telling the android system whether you're interested in snooping or stealing that particular touch event from the others in other words if you return true here it's a boolean method actually it returns a boolean value if you return true here the on touch event method will be called now remember on touch event means simply process the touch and go back so in other words if you return true or false from on touch event it's going to go back to the activity it is not going to go on the right side but if you return false here it's going to find all the children for this view group a in the reverse order now we have only one child that is the view group b which is a direct child so it's going to jump here it's going to jump the on touch event over here and again the same thing applies you return true process the touch event for the view group and get the hell out if you return false find the children jump to the children's on touch event now notice 
that for the view C, there is no on intercept touch event. That's because only a view group has this method on intercept touch event. The idea is a parent should be capable of tracking or stealing the touch from a child. In other words, if you have a relative layout and a button, there are two things that you can do. You can either make the button itself be capable of processing the touch event or you can make the relative layout capable of processing the touch event on behalf of the button, something like that. So that's why the on intercept touch event actually exists out there. So here, you return false, you jump to the on touch event. Now, inside the on touch event, it's again a method which returns a Boolean value. If you return false, it means that your view C is not interested in processing this event. If you return true here, it means that, yay, you have processed this event and you don't care about anyone else. But given the fact that your view C says that I'm not interested, it's going to jump down to the parent. It's going to go here to on touch event of view group B. Again, if you return true here, it's processed, it's done, it's finished at this stage. But if you return false here, it's going to jump to the parent that is the on touch event of A. If you return true here, it's processed here. Otherwise, it's going to jump to the activity and call the on touch event of the activity. So this is the basic cycle of touch framework in Android. So let's come to one of the most important parts of this discussion and that is how does the view groups dispatch touch event may actually look like behind the scenes. So the first thing that the view group or your frame layout or your relative layout or your custom layouts dispatch touch event does is to call the on intercept touch event. Now this is a method that returns a boolean value either true or false. Look at the if conditions putting a not over here a logical not indicating that if the on intercept touch event returns true then you don't want to do anything about it. But if it returns false that means you're going to find the children and you're going to find them in the reverse order because of the for loop you're going to call each child's dispatch touch event and you're going to return true to indicate that particular child is going to process it or not. Now when you call a child's dispatch touch event, what is going to happen? Isn't that the question that you have right now? Let's take a look at that. Calling a child's dispatch touch event is going to first send events to the on touch listeners on touch method that the child has defined if any. If it has not defined any on touch listener, then that's going to directly go to the on touch event method of that particular child. In other words, if you have a text view or a button, then the on touch event is going to be called on that text view or button. And if you go back here and if you take a look at what I've done again, here at the end, I've said super dot dispatch touch event. Why have I used the super? That is because a dispatch touch event method is normally not intended for your use. You should use it only when you are making a custom layout or a custom view group where you want to decide that certain events should be forwarded to your children and certain should not be. So in, in this case, mostly you return the super dot dispatch on touch event out there and that's going to take care of returning the default value for it. So let's take a look at how this whole mechanism may actually work. So here you have an activity, there's a frame layout. And there is your view which is basically a button or a text view inside that frame layout so how does this whole mechanism work so the first thing the activity is going to do when you press this button or when your finger is down on the screen action underscore down will be triggered the dispatch touch event will be called to propagate that action underscore down motion event to your frame layout that is the view group now the frame layout is going to have the dispatch touch event triggered as well where the on intercepted touch event will be called for the frame layout. It's not shown here. Now in the on intercepted touch event of the frame layout, you will return false. You will tell that I don't care that the frame layout should not handle this. Let the child that is the text view or the button process it. So from there, it's going to jump to your child. That is the view dot dispatch touch event in this case. And from there, it's going to go to the on touch event out there. Now inside the on touch event, that is your text view or button, you're going to return false and you're going to tell Android that I don't care about the action down event. So it's going to go back to your frame layout. That is the on touch event method for the frame layout. Again, you're going to return false here and it simply means that the frame layout is also not bothered about the action down and it's going to jump to the activities on touch event. 
Now at this point, Android system notices that when you put your finger down and the action down was triggered, none of them were bothered to do anything about it. So when you lift your finger and action up is triggered, it's directly going to call the activities on touch event and it's going to skip all the others out there. So this is the way the ignorant view sample works. Now the case which I just discussed had this button or text view not interested in processing the touch event. But now let's take a look at the sample where it is interested. What will happen? So when you put your finger down on the text view or the button, the action underscore down will be triggered. The activity will, is going to call the dispatch touch event. It's going to forward it to the frame layout. Here you have the chance to decide what you want to do inside the on intercept touch event which is not shown here. The on intercept touch event is going to return false indicating that the frame layout is not interested in consuming the event rather it wants to forward the event to the button or text view. So it's going to jump here to the third step where your views dispatch touch event will be calling your on touch event for the view that is your text view or button. Inside the on touch event you're going to return true this time and you're going to say that yes I am interested in processing this event. Now when you lift your finger off the action underscore up is going to be forwarded. Now Android system will notice that your button or text view was actually interested in processing the action underscore down here in the above step. Hence it's going to forward the action underscore up to the same series of sequence over here to your on touch event. So with this I'm going to stop because I'm sure your minds are pretty much blown by now. You're going to have to see this video at least two three times to understand what is exactly going on if you are a beginner. But in the next video let's move further and take a look at what can be done with the touch framework in more detail and after that we'll finally move to the recycler views on item touch listener and see how we can handle a gesture over there in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice